tube again. Just can't wait to get back on the tube. Oh, hey. I'm, oh, sorry. Andrew. I'm Andrew. How you doing? Today, I want to teach you how to find all the intercepts and the asymptotes of the rational function of 4 being divided by x minus 2 squared. And then we're also going to sketch a little bit of a graph. So first thing is first, let's work with the intercepts. So when you want to find the x-intercept, what you want to do is you want to set your y value or the function's value equal to 0. Okay, so let's just write this out. So y is equal to 4 then divided by x minus 2 squared. And what you're going to do is you're going to uh, just basically set y equal to 0. So you're going to erase that, plug it into 0, and solve this now for x. Okay, so the problem is though when you do this you cross multiply and it works out to be 0 is equal to 4. And then it's like, huh, what? Wait a minute, who? That doesn't make any sense. So guess what that means? That means you don't have an x-intercept, okay? You follow this method, and if it doesn't make sense, if it just doesn't work, actually, I'm going to erase that function. If it just doesn't work, there is no x-intercept, if it doesn't make any sense, okay? No, I'm just going to write none. None. Now, to find the y-intercept, okay, to find the y-intercept, it turns out we do the opposite. We set x equal to 0. So now, everywhere you see x, just plug in a 0, all right? And then solve this for now y. So this would be 4 over negative 2 squared, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, so 4 over 4, that's equal to 1. So that's going to be now your y-intercept, basically. That's the y-coordinate, okay? If y is 1 and x is 0, all right? So now what we're going to do is just kind of write that on down, all right? So the y-intercept here, what happened? The y-intercept is simply going to be, the coordinates is going to be uh, 0, comma, 1. And that's that. Next, we look at the asymptotes. So we have our <clears throat> vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So let's first work with the vertical asymptote. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that your function is fully factored, okay, uh, which it is, and you want to cancel any factors in the numerator and the denominator, if possible, first. All right. In this case, there's nothing to cancel, uh, so we just go right to it. After you cancel anything that's appropriate, what you do is you take that denominator, x minus 2, and you set it equal to 0. Okay, set it equal to zero, and what you're going to do is you're going to solve this for x. And once we have this set equal to zero, all we're going to do is solve. So we can take the square root of both sides, so that's basically going to be x minus 2 equals now zero. And technically you would have kind of a positive negative zero, but since it's zero, it really doesn't matter. Right, positive and negative zero, the same thing. So all you're going to do is solving this for x is add 2 to both sides, and x is going to be equal to 2. Now that is the equation now of your vertical asymptote. It's that straightforward. Okay, so that's all you have to do. So your horizontal asymptote, your vertical asymptote here is x is equal to 2. Now the next part is to deal with the horizontal asymptote or your slant asymptote. Now it depends on what the function looks like. All right. What you have to do is you have to determine whether it's something known as top heavy, equally heavy. Is that even how you spell? I don't even know what kind of word. Equal. Equally. Something like that. And bottom. Bottom heavy. Okay. If it's a top heavy function, you're going to have a slant asymptote. It's an If it's an equally heavy or... A bottom heavy, you're going to have a horizontal asymptote, okay? So what do we mean by top, equal, and bottom? Well, basically, when we look at the function, wherever, whichever side, the numerator or the denominator, have the highest power of x, that's, how we, that's what we would consider top heavy and bottom heavy. For example, there is no x in the numerator, so x really has a value of 0 as its exponent. And in the denominator, x has a power of 1. So this is a bottom heavy. The bottom is bigger than the top, all right? Um, and then if this, if this was like 4x, then I would say it's equally heavy more or less. And uh, actually, oops, I made a little bit of a silly mistake, actually, now that I think about it. Sorry about that. What I meant to say was, um, you would really want to, the, the highest power of x in the denominator is actually squared, because you have this factor being squared. So really, if you were to foil this out, it would be x squared minus 4x plus 4. So the highest power of x in the denominator is technically a 2. Okay, so if this if this was an x squared on the top, that would have been equally heavy. If this was an x cubed thing, that'd be top heavy. And uh, this is an example, though, of a bottom heavy function that we have currently. So if it's bottom heavy, it's always going to be a horizontal asymptote. And you can memorize this. The horizontal asymptote is always going to have a value of 0, y being equal to 0. And that's all that there is to it. All right. Now that we have everything, all these pieces, we can finally graph this thing. All right, so let's set up a, a set of axes. So I'll set this up over here and here. First thing I'll do is I'll graph uh, the x-intercept. Well, there's none, so I don't have to worry about that. And the y-intercept of uh, 0, comma 1. 
So 0 comma 1 will be right here. Next thing I do then is I'm going to pl plug in my vertical asymptote at x is equal to 2. So I just draw a little line at x equals 2, and I'm going to dash it. Okay, we'll just dash this a little bit, just so it's not confused with the axes overall. And then I have a horizontal asymptote, another one, uh, another asymptote at equals 0. That one I'm going to leave just alone. So from here, I definitely know since I have a point, and the way I'm looking at this now is I'm looking at it um, from the uh, asymptote perspective. In other words, I have one quadrant over here, I have another quadrant over here, I have another quadrant over here, and I have another quadrant over here. And basically what's going to happen is you're going to have a function in one of, in two of those four quadrants. Since I have a point already in this quadrant up in here, I know I'm going to have part of the function in that location. Okay, so let me try to do my best here to have it go through that point. And this is not going to look that great. Yeah, that's not going to look that good. Let me try that one more time, ladies and gentlemen. That's a little bit better, but still not, not the best. I think you get the point, hopefully. So this is going to trail on off. This is just going to go totally straight, though. All right, it's not going to curve on back up. But it's going to go out there and out there. So now the question is, well, where is the other side? So what you can start to do is what might be the easiest thing is you want to start to pick, like, easy values. And you plug them on into the function and see what happens. Like, for example, for example. If my x value, so let's see what happens. If I go 1, 2, 3, okay? Let's say I have an x value equal to 3. My question is, well, what in the world would the y value be? Well, you can simply now check with the function. All you have to do is take 3 and plug it in here for x. So it's 3 minus 2. What's a 1? 1 squared is going to be 1. And 4 divided by 1 is a 4, a positive 4. So what that means is that when you plugged in 3 into this function, you realize that you had a coordinate of 3, 4. And that would be located on your graph now in this place. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now that's how I determine where the other side is. Okay, it's going to be one of the two of those four quadrants. So I know I'm going to have a graph up in here now. Okay, or the function will live up in that quadrant. So, let's see if that's hopefully what it looks like. <laughs> so let's go to the calculator and plug it in. All right, so x minus 2. Please, I hope this works. Please. Oh, okay, good. Look at that. There it is, right? So there's the function, and it looks very, very, very close to what we have drawn. All right? So hopefully that helps, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Check out our channel because we've got tons of stuff out there for you. Always take a look at the description below. And we don't only have mathematics. We have chemistry and physics. Physics. What? Physics. Physics. There you go. I'm just learning how to speak. Physics as well. And we'd love to help you through multiple uh, courses. The best way, remember, to do well in these classes is to do a ton of practice problems. All right? And that's kind of what our channel is dedicated to, giving you a ton of practice, okay? And with video solutions and coaching along the way. Check us out. I think you'll be happy. Take care.